All right, today we're gonna to be looking at another couple of decks, the Marvel Extreme deck and the Amazing Spider-Man deck. I'm using my playing card rubric that I've created to uh, evaluate these decks. And if you haven't seen what that is, I can look up here at the link to get to that video. So let's go ahead and get started with the Marvel uh, Extreme deck. So the box itself is a printed picture, of course, and it has text, a uh, paper box. Um, you can see the front and back here. So that is uh, three points for the box, with it being a paper box, with a printed picture and text. Now the material of the cards, if we get into these, the material is um, smooth paper, so that is the lowest uh, score I have, which is a 1 for the material. Nothing uh, super special here. Uh, if we look at the backs themselves, um, it has this Marvel Extreme logo on it, you know, top and bottom. So um, this, I'm actually appending my rubric, I'm going to put it with the 2.5, which is normally just a unique pattern which has no orientation. And I'm gonna make this count as that, even though it is pretty much just text for the most part, but it's not just plain text. There is some, you know, artwork around it, but I wouldn't go as far as to call it a pattern made of pictures, which is the highest score I give. So I'm putting it in the 2.5 category for the back. Now for the fronts. So we're gonna go with, let's see, I'll get to these in a minute, but the jokers are these wild cards. And then the face cards, I'll just go through them here. Get uh, Captain America and Daredevil and such. And um, what we have here are, I'm gonna categorize these as picture cards because, you know, even though like the king and queen would normally look like this with the image that's top and bottom. The pip cards themselves, all these numbered cards, they are also like that. And so, um, even though they don't have an orientation, which is fine, I'm still gonna consider them picture cards. And that is going to be, well, based on the number of pictures there are. Now, as I go through these cards, we can see as soon as I get to the end of the spades here that there is a limited number of pictures. So as you can see here, we now repeat the kings, like the king of hearts and the king of Duttons have the same picture on them. And if we take a look at the king of clubs and the head back to the king of spades, you can see that the clubs and and spades also have the same pictures on them. So even if I go to like a random card like uh, Eight of Diamonds, then the Eight of Hearts will match, as you can see there. Which means the total number of uh, unique pictures um, only goes up to 26. That being two pictures per value shared between two suits. So I already said that we got the uh, two jokers here, but also these two cards, these are extra cards that are included with the deck. Um, they don't really fit with the deck. They aren't magic cards per se. They're like character bio cards for Iron Man and Thor, which is just odd. I don't know if this goes with another card game or if they're just supposed to be collectible cards. It does say collector card at the top, so maybe that's all they are. But um, I will give the deck an extra half point to, for including these, uh, uh, albeit worthless, but still interesting extra cards. Which means the faces are a total of 3.7, which brings the whole deck up to a total of 10.2 out of 20, and a total of 51 out of 100. Just above average deck, right there. Now let's go ahead and check out the Spider-Man deck. This amazing Spider-Man deck is another paper box with print on it and text. So same as the Marvel box, this is another three. 
And then as we go into the material of the cards, this is also paper smooth, which means it's just a one for the material. And then as we go into the backs of the cards, uh, this is a printed picture, which qualifies it as three points, whereas the marble deck was only 2.5 for its single text that was like top and bottom. Uh, this does have an orientation, so it's kind of lame to have it to be holding your hands and have it look like that. But at least it has a picture of something recognizable rather than just text. So it is a three. And now as we go into the proper faces or front of the cards, um, these two cards here, I do not consider these as extra cards for a half point because they're pretty much just ads. Um, these are show these show up in a ton of different decks. Um, pretty much worthless. You got your two jokers, which is nice. And then here, you can see the threes have these unique pictures, but they're all the same unique picture. Which means our total card count is actually going to be even less than the other deck. It's only 13 unique pictures, where we have one picture for each value, and it's the same picture on every suit. So I'll just go ahead and fan through these a bit, uh, just so you can take a look at the different pictures. They are all pretty cool, but um, again, they are the same picture. Like every jack is the same, every king is the same. So the, the repetitiveness of that is going to keep it from earning more points than it could. Which means that this deck, this Spider-Man deck, has a total of 9 points out of 20 just below average, which is a 45 out of 100. And also just for reference, guess, um, in case you're wondering about my lighting situation here, the sun does get down a lot sooner now that uh, winter is coming on, so I'm trying out a different lighting setup where I don't have to use natural sunlight, but I mean, I wish I could use natural sunlight, it would be best. But uh, that is it for this deck. And gonna be it for the video and get my jokers in here and my ads. Just gonna keep those together. Do the ads have the back? They do have the back. That's why I keep them around. So once again, just to recap, the Marvel deck here is 51 out of 100. Spider-Man is a 45 out of 100. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and you can get notified of future videos as they come out. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.